My all-time favorite series is coming to a close, and I'm on the verge of an emotional breakdown. Sounds about right! This week, I'm going to be doing a reread and a binge read of the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series in preparation for the final book, The Desolations of Devil's Acre. That title gives Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children a run for its money, like, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children is already a tongue twister, like, try to save that five times fast. Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar I can't even say it once. Now the desolations of Devil's Acre. The desolations of Devil's Acre. The devil Glitched. Glitched. Today's video is being sponsored by Penguin Teen. This series has been there for me for so long now. It was what kind of kicked off my booktube journey. Like, in my first year of booktube, I read Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, and pretty much the rest is history. Did I make loving Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children too much of a personality trait? 100%! I have no regrets. If you don't know anything about the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series, then let me fill you in a little bit. We've got this guy named Jacob. He lives a very mundane life. His grandpa, on the other hand, has lived an extraordinary life. After the passing of his grandfather and looking into his grandfather's past, he kind of unlocks this whole new world full of peculiar things, including peculiar children who have these peculiar abilities. Throughout the series, they go on adventures, face off monsters, and have a little bit of romance every now and then. And throughout the book, it incorporates peculiar pictures that are used as a way to kind of help tell the story. That is a very obscure description, but hopefully you get the point. So this week, in preparation for the release of The Desolations of Devil's Acre, which comes out on February 23rd, more information on the last book in the description down below. I'm going to be binge reading, binge rereading the Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children series. That way I am fully prepped, fully prepared for book six, even though honestly... I don't think I can fully prepare for book six. Like, I am not emotionally ready to say goodbye to these characters, not me. Already getting emotional. Ooh, the eyes literally just got a little bit watery. Listen, I consider this series home, like a second home. Like, once I dive into them, I'm like, wow, I feel so comfortable being in here. I just want to live in these books forever. I just want to nestle up inside of them. That's all I want. It's kind of bittersweet that it's coming to a close, yet at the same time, I'm excited to see a bit of closure with these characters. I thought it would be fun to kind of vlog my experience for reading these books, so that's what I'm going to be doing this week. We're obviously going to be kicking it off with the first book, Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children, the iconic book that started it all. I feel like I'm going to plow through this one today because I know it like the back of my hand, even though I don't really know the back of my hand that well. Like I don't look at the back of my hand that often, but I know this book really well. Like I've read it more times than I know. Like honestly, I have the audiobook, so sometimes I'll just be like chilling and I'll throw on the audiobook because I love this story. Again, it's a second home for me. I've also got a lot of fun peculiar themed things planned for this vlog. I think it's time we get started. I've got five books to get through this week, so let's get reading. Update time, update time. I hit chapter eight, page 203, so I'm a little over halfway through the book already. Yeet. Obviously, I'm loving it. This video is going to be a gush fest. I don't really have anything negative to say about this series. Like, I love it. I love it. I love it. Y'all know that. Y'all know I love it. I'm trash for the peculiar series. Every time I reread it, I still pick up on things that I might have missed before. Like, the amount of foreshadowing. Ho 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 ho. There is a lot. Like, just jam-packed in it. And I'm just like, how did I not pick up on that before? Why did I not pick up on that on my ninth reread of this freaking book? I think something that I really love about the first book is how Jacob steps into the Peculiar's world and changes their world and they kind of step into his world and change his world and I just love seeing how they come together and feed me a trope that I full on love and that is the found family trope. There is definitely a found family situation that happens in this book and it's just very much so at the forefront and I love that aspect. I love when these people from different backgrounds, different worlds come together and just form this incredible bond that can't be broken. It's just, it's beautiful. I love it. And I think that that's something that I'm really drawn to when it comes to this story is the fact that like it's kind of a reminder that there's all the time in the world to find your people, to find the people that you vibe with, that you want to form connection with, that you want to grow a bond with. It can be at any point in your life. You will find your people. You just have to give it time. Anyway, I'm definitely going to be reading my way through to the end of this book this afternoon. It's actually like the perfect day or week kind of to read this series because of the fact that it snowed so hard last night that like I can't go anywhere. I'm stuck here. So this is the perfect way to spend my snow day. I just wish I would have stocked up on hot cocoa. Back to reading. It's time for a peculiar break, the segment on the vlog where we take a break from reading and do a peculiar activity because my life in lockdown is boring and I need to spice up the vlog. <laughs> I'm going to try to make a collage that encompasses the way that I feel about Peculiar and how it relates to the series. Like, visually, I'm going to try to create a collage that just kind of encompasses that, like, visual feeling I have towards the series. I've done something like this before in a vlog, and I loved it. I love making collages. Like, talk about a therapeutic activity. It's mind-numbing, it's a creative outlet, and it's easy. So, let's get started.
or book before bed, update before bed, book update before bed, talking in bed before book. What should I call this? It's time for updates in bed. Hey, hey. I finished reading Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. It's pretty early in the evening. It's only like 9.30, so I think I might get a head start on Hollow City. We shall see how I feel after I get ready for bed because like, I, I'm not wearing this to bed. I just am wearing this because I'm filming a video right now and I don't want to be in my PJs because my PJs make me look like a potato. Not that this doesn't make me look like a potato because this shade actually almost does look kind of like a potato, huh? But that's besides the point. This book just made me feel so much happiness. Like every time I read this book, it just makes me so happy. I'm just like overflowing with happiness and it makes me feel so good. I mean, it's not like it's the most happy-go-lucky book. Like a lot of sad things happen in here and creepy things happen in here. Not necessarily scary things, but it does kind of get a little on the dark side at some points. But just my love for the story itself, the characters, just all of those things just fills me with so much happiness and it makes me feel just all the feels. Which is such an old school thing to say. I really need to stop saying all the feels. We're not in 2014! But yeah, it felt so good to be back in this comfort read. I think I'm gonna go ahead and get a head start on Hollow City tonight. So I will update you guys in the morning. Yee! Good night, good night, good night! I woke up at 6 a.m. this morning after being awake till 2 in the morning reading this dang book because once you start, you kind of can't stop. Like, you just go foo 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 with the pages. I would say that this book was kind of a big game changer for the series as a whole because the first book really does a great job of just like introducing the world, introducing all the peculiars, and just kind of really giving you an idea as to what's kind of going on in this world with all the different loops and whatnot. This book, on the other hand, is like, okay, I'm gonna set the tone for the series. I'm gonna show you where we're gonna go. I'm going to be the bridge into what's to come. Anyway, what I'm trying to say is that like you just speed through the pages because of just how like intense the beginning portion of this book is. Like I just kind of forgot. I always forget that like the stakes are a lot higher in this book. The danger levels are upped quite a bit. And to be frank, it's a little on the chaotic side in a good way. Like I love how chaotic it is. Like hello, bring on the drama. Like this book just woke up and chose chaos, chaos, chaos. But I'm here for it. I want more of it. I think this would have to be like my favorite picture that I've come across so far in Hollow City. It's just so good. I want to like recreate that at some point. I don't know that I'll be able to recreate it, but I'd like to try. I only have around 75 pages left, so I'm for sure going to be finishing this within like a few hours here. And then I'm going to be diving right on into Library of Souls. We are making progress, my dudes. Progress, progress, progress. Back to reading. Strange, I thought, how you can be living your dreams and your nightmares at the very same time. Okay, I finished Hollow City. And man, how do I always forget about the ending? I mean, I don't always forget about the ending. Like, obviously, I remember the big things that happen in this series because, like, I've read it so many times. But that's another part of the problem is because I've read it back to back to back so many times, the series just kind of, like, bleeds together at this point. Like, when I think about the series, it's just kind of all mushed together. Like, it's one book combined, so I don't always remember when things come into play. I obviously remember pretty much everything that happens, but, like, I don't remember when things happen. But... The ending. I just want to know how I survived reading this book and not having the next book on hand after finishing it when I read it for the first time because... <sighs> The ending is powerful. Like, the ending is so cool, so exciting, and just, again, this book as a whole is a game changer. So, like, I just don't know how I did it, how I read this one originally, and then just had to wait for however long it was until Library of Souls came out, which is going to be what I'm diving into next, obviously. I wouldn't, like, dive into, like, the fifth book now. Why would I do that? I'm gonna be diving into Library of Souls. <laughs> but I'm excited to get to this one. This one is a banger of a finale. A banger. And I can't wait to get into it and remember all the things. It's gonna be wild. It's gonna be weird. It's gonna be peculiar. I'm ready. Baby, let the games begin. Time for another peculiar break. I found a quiz online where you can find out which character you are from Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children. And like, I want to see which character this quiz puts me as. I want to be Jacob because I feel like I'm the most like him. Like, his journey in Miss Peregrine's reminds me a lot of myself. Obviously, I've never found a loop. Obviously, I've never met Peculiars. But like, his family situation more so is something that reminds me a lot of my own. So, let's get it. Number one, how likely are you to betray a friend? Huh, never. Which is the first option. Never. I would do anything for my friends.
friends. The second option is I would only ever betray a friend for a very good reason, most likely to keep them or someone else safe. Ooh, okay. I actually do, hmm, I like that option. Number three, I just don't know. I would like to think I'm loyal, but I'm afraid a lot of the time. And four, I don't really have friends. Uh, bada bing, bada boom, bada bing, bada boom. I think I would go with the second one. I would only ever betray a friend for a very good reason. Like if it were to help them out, which I know sounds weird, but if it were like to keep them safe, then like, yeah, I would. So I'm going with two. I'm not super confident in that answer though. Number three, a white is coming for one of your friends. What do you do? One, I try to protect my friend by grabbing them and running. Two, I try to attack the white. Three, I would run away. Four, I would try to find a plan to keep everyone safe and escape the white. I'd use my head to figure it out. <sighs> this is a hard one because like, obviously I'm not in that situation. So like sitting here looking in on the situation, I would be like, of course I'd go with four. I would try to find a plan to keep everyone safe and escape the white. But like in that moment, that chaotic moment, I don't know that I would have the right mindset to be like, okay, here's the plan. Here's the deal. Let's get it. So I would say number one, I try to protect my friend by grabbing them and running. That's what I think I would do in that situation. I don't think I have the emotional strength to be like, okay, I'm going to sit here and come up with a plan while we're being attacked. Like, nope, we're running. Let's get out of here. What is one word people would use to describe you? Oh God, I hate stuff like this. One, dreamer. Two, passionate. Three, sweet. Four, sarcastic. Oh, I hate stuff like this because I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay, dreamer maybe? I'm gonna say dreamer because I am a dreamer. That's how I would describe myself as a dreamer. I don't know if other people would describe myself that way, but I definitely would be like, I'm a, I'm a dreamer. What is your first reaction to strangers? Number one, suspicion. Me. Two, the same as it is to any person I interact with. I don't trust them and I don't like them. Oh my gosh. Number three, I love meeting new people. I'm interested in who they are. Four, I've had some bad experiences with new people, so I don't blindly trust everyone, but I'm usually open to new friendships. It's number one for me, baby. Suspicion. I hate that I'm that way and I'm working on it. What is your peculiar... Why is that hard to say? What is your peculiar... What is your peculiar... What is your peculiarity? Peculiar... Peculiar... What is your peculiar ability? I can't say peculiarity. I'm not even gonna try anymore. One, I can reanimate the dead. Two, I am incredibly strong. Three, I can control air. Four, I can see hollow gas. This question is like a dead giveaway as to who you're gonna end up being, right? I think if I was a peculiar. I would want to see hollow gas. Like, I would want to see them because they're coming at you, and if you can't see them, then you're gonna die. So, like, of course I'd want to see them and be able to be like, y'all, it's coming, it's coming, attack it. Like, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say I can see hollow gas. Do you get along with your family? One, not even a little bit. Two, I get along really well with some members of my family, but sometimes my parents don't really get me. Three, my family is kind of afraid of me. Four, I don't think my family understands me at all. This doesn't give you the option of, like, if you get along with your family. I get along with my family, so I guess I'll go with two because that's the closest I can get. I get along really well with my family, but sometimes my parents don't really get me. I mean, yeah, I feel like that's the case for everybody though. Like sometimes your parents just don't understand the way you're acting. I'm gonna say number two. Who am I gonna be? Oh, oh, here we go. I'm Jacob Portman. Hey! I mean, honestly, that's not surprising. Let's read the little thing here and see how accurate I think it is. You have always thought you weren't particularly interesting or special yet, but it turns out there's a lot more to you than meets the eye. I don't know about that. You have an active imagination, yes, and a drive for exploration. True. You've experienced serious loss in your life though. Uh-huh. And it affected you, dampening your enthusiasm for life and leaving you with anxiety. Wow! I feel attacked by that. Love that. However, you are also a natural leader. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. And when the need arises, you take charge to keep the peculiar children safe from the whites. I would say that that's like pretty accurate. Obviously, there are a few things in there that I'm like, yeah, no. Like the leadership thing. I'm not good at taking leadership. I would much rather somebody else take leadership. Sometimes I have to. I don't like that though. I don't want that. I don't want that responsibility. Like, don't put that on my shoulders, please. I'm just gonna whoo whoo. But yeah, apparently I'm Jacob. I'm gonna leave a link to the quiz in the description. So go take it and then come back and tell me in the comments who you got, because I'm curious. Time for another update. I have not gotten very far into Library of Souls yet, I'm gonna be honest. Uh, this might be the part in my little readathon where I'm hitting a bit of a slump. Not a slump necessarily, but I'm kind of hitting a bit of a slowdown, you know what I'm saying? I'm on chapter four, so I'm 153 pages into it. It's so interesting because this one, tone-wise, is just so completely, vividly different from the first two books. Like, this one goes in such a different direction in terms of the tone. Like, it's just dark and gritty, albeit it does have its funny moments. Like, the first little bit of the story kind of takes place around this like Comic-Con area and that aspect is so funny because like the Peculiars are used to like looking 
different, I guess you could say. I mean, we have a girl that's got like a mouth in the back of her head. We have a boy who's invisible, so you get what I'm saying. So seeing Emma being exposed to all these people like dressed up in like cosplay and stuff and just being like so confused is so funny to me and I love that aspect. But then like after that like little scene, things just like go in such a dark and gritty place. And I love that tone change. Like I think it's really fascinating, but it's just so different from the first two books. There's a lot of like family history in this one that I haven't really gotten to yet, but that's like the part of this book that I love learning about. Like I love how complicated, oh, how complicated Miss Peregrine's family history is. Like that is what I'm here for. I have signed up for the complicated family relationships and I can't wait to kind of dig deeper into that. Every time I read this book, I feel like that's the thing that I'm just like, oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. But yes, hopefully planning to finish this one today. Again, I'm kind of feeling that like little bit of a burnout edge. So I need something to kind of like pick me up, get me going and blast my way through Library of Souls. I got this, I got this, I got this. Send me all the good reading vibes, please. Even though if you send it now, it'll be too late because this video was filmed in the past. That's all right. I can always use some good reading vibes. So send them my way. I'll send some your way too. <laughs> okay, I need to simmer down here. Back to it. It had become one of the defining truths of my life that no matter how hard I tried to keep them flattened, two-dimensional, jailed in paper and ink, there would always be stories that refused to stay bound inside books. It was never just a story. I would know. The story had swallowed my whole life. Time for another peculiar break. We're going back to arts and crafts, my dudes. I've been really loving that art style where it's like a picture that's just like continuous. Like they start just like drawing a line and like they just create the image. I don't know if I'm explaining it well enough, but that's what I'm gonna try to do. Am I an artist? No, not at all. That's something we've already cleared up on this channel. But I love a challenge. I love trying new things. And not that I haven't tried this because I have tried this. Did it turn out well? No, but it'll never see the light of day on the internet. This one, on the other hand, is going to see the light of day. So hopefully it turns out well. I got these super cheap little canvases from the dollar store. So if I mess one up, then I can try it again. But hopefully I won't mess it up. I'm just going to try using a Sharpie for this. I don't know if it's going to be the best thing to use, per se, on a canvas. Like, I don't know if it's going to translate well, but we're going to try it anyway. We're just going to see how this goes. Just going to give it a go and hope for the best. Let's do this thing. Stucco in the heat Let me take you dancing Let me get you on your feet Arizona garden With my little cactus flower Let the day slip away In the golden hour We've got nothing But time and you Guys, I don't hate something I made for once in my life. What is this? I mean, it's not perfect. I know I'm not the next Picasso. Not saying that. Uh, 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 uh. But I'm pretty proud of how this turned out. Mind you, I did pick up my Sharpie at certain points on accident just because it's like instinct. You just like pick up your pen, pick up your pencil, whatever, when you're creating something. So, so it wasn't fully something that was like all in one go. It wasn't just one continuous line because your boy messed up. Also, my Sharpie definitely was giving out there towards the end. And I was like, uh oh, SpaghettiO. And I also really don't love this like curtain detail I did like I could have improved on that for sure but whatever it's fine this was fun I enjoyed this again therapeutic art I'm here for it <laughs> takes your mind off of all your worries as you do it it's just nice and peaceful I'm here for it 10 out of 10 would recommend it's that time of night where I uh, don't remember what I call this. Update video, no. Book update, no. Update in bed time. Hey, hey, that was wrong, but that's all right. Ooh, let's wear these. Got some grandpa glasses on the side. We are grandpa vibing tonight. I did not update the vlog like at all today, did I? I like did one update and then just didn't update at all. But I'm here to tell you I finished Library of Souls. It might be, you know, 1230 in the morning. Which isn't really that late. For me, that's not bad at all. But the important thing is that I finished Library of Souls, which is a good thing because we are on track now to completing this series this week. I'm really excited about that. But my thoughts on Library of Souls, holy moly. This is one banger of a finale. Like I, well, it's not necessarily a finale because obviously it's six books, but like in my head, they're separate trilogies. Maybe I'll talk about that later. Anyways, when this was originally just the Miss Peregrine's trilogy, this was a banger of a finale. Now here's the thing. I did not appreciate it the first time I read it. I 
did not appreciate the masterpiece that it is. It took me rereading it to like fully let it sink in that it's such a good finale. Like it's just so jam-packed with so many things and just the way it's all brought together is just so beautifully done in my opinion, obviously. That's my opinion. Ooh, and maybe, maybe I'm biased. Maybe I am because I love this series. But I will say that I didn't appreciate it the first time I read it. I was like, do I like that? I don't know. But man, Ransom did the thing. He did the dang thing. Just the, the way he brought it to a close just was so satisfying and so beautifully done. And mm, tomorrow I'm going to be starting a map of days. I almost just called it something else. I think I almost just called it a map of souls. That's not what it is. It's a map of days. And the Peculiars are going to America in that one, which is really wild so i'm looking forward to getting into that one but that one is a thick book it's a pretty long book which both makes me happy and intimidated i might try starting that tonight but i don't know yet because i am starting to feel the z z z so we will see but i will update you guys in the morning It's a new day in the vlog. Today I am working on a map of days. I read a little bit last night, I read a little bit this morning, and I'm gonna be plowing my way through it today. Hey, hey. I'm on page 107, so I made a bit of a dent last night, but like honestly, that's not that big of a dent because this is one thick book. It a thick one, which I'm not complaining. The more story you give me, the more I will eat that right up. This one is so interesting for so many different reasons. One, we're in America. Two, Jacob's family, his immediate family, like that whole dynamic is just so interesting to read about especially in this book because of reasons i feel like i can't say too much because obviously this is book four in the series but just like how things have changed from book one his relationship with his parents and book four like it's still a messy relationship don't get me wrong like jacob does not have the best relationship with his parents that's for sure but it's even messier in this one that's what i will say that's as far as i'm gonna go but a map of days is also kind of interesting because it's the first kind of introduction in the series to colored pictures which i don't know why but to me that's just like so fascinating like we have some colored pictures throughout this one but also this one just kind of takes the series in a different direction i've kind of been thinking about this though and how i kind of separate the series in my mind into two trilogies so we've got the first three books that's a trilogy and then the last three books that's a trilogy so this kind of feels like a fresh start in some kind of ways mind you i do recommend just reading it from book one all the way to book six like that's the best way to read it so that you know what the heck is going on because you can't really read this one without having read the first three books i mean you can have at it if you want that but like i recommend reading books one through three before you get to this one anyway this one is a game changer just like how hollow city was a game changer this one just kind of like sets a new direction for the rest of the books and kind of like gives us an idea as to where we're going but also doesn't give us too much so my plan today is to try my best to make it all the way through this one i think i can if i just focus i just gotta focus all about the F-O-C-U-S and to help me focus I got myself some boba because I am boba trash okay I admit it I'm trash for boba but honestly I just needed like a comfort item today and that comfort item is in the form of boba tea it's gonna bring me some comfort and hopefully help me focus on reading let's get to it all my life, normal people had mostly baffled me the ridiculous ways they strove to impress one another, the mediocre goals that seemed to drive them, the banality of their dreams, the way people rejected anything that didn't fit their narrow paradigm of acceptability, as if those who thought or acted or dressed or dreamed differently from them were a threat to their very existence. Update time, update time. It is update time. I've reached chapter 12, I'm on page 303, and we have, how many pages do we have? 480 pages. We still got a way to go. So, thoughts. Um... <laughs> there are things that I just forget about. Things that I think I kind of like block out in my mind. And one of the things is the big dynamic shift in this one. Because let me tell you, there's a big dynamic shift. There's just a lot that goes down. A lot of friction, a lot of tension, a lot of just misunderstanding, a lot of miscommunication. This one does make me a little sad at times. Like it's really fun and thrilling and there's so much happening which is something that i love about ransom riggs books is that i feel like i can never get bored personally like i feel like there's so much to it he always has so many like twists and turns and just so many exciting things happening throughout his stories but that's besides the point this one makes me sad because of how 
things change and it's uh, it's different. It's different. It's different. It's just not the same and that's okay because I think that that's like a realistic thing too and that's like what I like about it too. Again, I'm not going into too much detail. I'm being very vague but like things change um, but we have a lot of fun new characters in this one that I love reading about and we go to a lot of interesting loops in this one. But anyway, I've got some grinding to do in terms of reading. I don't remember exactly how this one closes. Like I remember like little details of it. I know it's probably a big banger of an ending because that's what Ransom does. He's like, ha 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 ha. Here's the last chapter. Let me whack you upside the head with chaos. What's, what's the jingle? It's update in bedtime. Hey, hey, that's wrong, but we're gonna go with it because I don't remember the lyrics yet. Yeah, yeah. Guys, it is two in the morning. I'm tired, but I finished, I finished a map of days. I finished, I finished the thick book. I finished and I'm tired. Ideally, I would read a couple of chapters of Conference of the Birds. I don't know that I've got it in me. Ah. Uh, anyway, my thoughts on this book. This book, it's kind of a emotional roller coaster just because of the things that are happening internally with the Peculiars and Jacob. And then we've got Nor that comes into the picture and Nor comes in and kind of shakes things up a little bit. Man, just kind of rattles up things, really just rattles up the situations that are happening within the book. And it is sending me down a feels trip, okay? That's what I will say. Who needs a field trip when you've got a field trip. Overall though, I really enjoy it. Again, it is a big one, so I'm surprised that I made it through. I haven't shown, I need to show my favorite picture. Let's see if I can find my favorite picture in here. Whoa, 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 let's pump it up. I like this one because the dog in it is wearing a hat and it's too pure. This one is also just very interesting and also just what that like correlates with in the story is kind of wild because that is a wild situation that they find themselves in. The pictures are just such an interesting element within these books because it just like makes you wonder like what is going on in these pictures? What's the story behind these pictures, you know? Like, that's what I always end up being so curious about. But tonight, will I start tonight the Conference of the Birds? Will I start in the morning? I'm not sure. Stay tuned to find out. I will talk to you guys in the morning with another update. Yeah, I'm going to bed. Good night. <laughs>《Morning》It's not morning, it's midday. We are getting a late start today. Today I am reading The Conference of the Birds. This is the one that I've read the least. Like, I think I've only read it twice? Once? I think I've only read it once. Huh. Wow. Shocker. Who even am I? And I'm actually really excited to reread this one just because of the fact that once I first read it, I just kind of plowed my way through it because I needed to know what was going to happen next in the story. So, like, it's going to be nice to go back and, like, take my time with it, even though I'm going to be trying to read it in, like, one day. But I'm going to try to just, like, soak it all in. It is, like, the short, like, one of the shortest, I think, in the series, potentially the shortest. This is what I'm doing today. I'm going to be reading this. I'm going to go get some lunch right now and read during lunch. Let's get it. One never knows when the end is coming, or if we may all be assembled together as a whole and complete family again. And so I want you to know that I regret every day that my full attention has been called away from you. And if these talks and the rebuilding of our home have caused me to shirk my responsibility to you, I am sorry. It's bed update time. Hey, hey, that's wrong, isn't it? It's wrong. It's me not remembering the theme song. But today I finished The Conference of the Birds. Yes, book five in the series. I am fully prepared for book six. And let me tell you, I'm excited for where things are going. Like, I am really interested to see where things are kind of brought to a close with book six. Because this one, while there are things in here that make me angry, I will not lie. I will not lie. There are things where I'm just like, why is this happening? I also feel like it's going in such a cool direction. Like, for example, Nora's narrative is the one that I am most fascinated by. Like, I just feel like the reason she was brought in is a very big reason. Like, there's a big thing that's coming, a big storm that's coming with her character, and that has me so pumped. I am so looking forward to that. I'm a little scared for certain things, and I think it's normal to be a little bit nervous for the last book. Like, I am a little bit on the nervous side. Like, I know that things are gonna turn out fine, but there's just that part of me that's a little on the scared side, a little on the scared side.
Just got to Barnes & Noble, it feels like game day, it is release day for the Desolations of Devil's Acre, and I'm like 10 minutes early because typical of me, I'm 10 minutes before Barnes & Noble has opened. I'm anxiously waiting out here to go inside and grab the book. Ah! I can't believe this is gonna be like the last day that I can pick up a peculiar book. I mean, who knows what the future holds? Like, Ransom could easily write another book in this world, like, I would be a-okay with that. Specifically, I need a series focused on Miss Peregrine's life. Like, her life is so fascinating to me. Just the little bits that we've gotten throughout the series have been so fascinating and just like her brothers. Oh man, complicated drama. I need, I need that series. For now, this is the last book in the Peculiar series that I will be picking up on release day and it's, it's sad. I don't want to get up all up in my feels. I don't want to be that person. Anyway, I'm going to be picking up the last book and just read, read, reading. I got the goods. It's beautiful. It's actually the Barnes and Noble exclusive edition, which includes a deleted scene. I did not even know that that was a thing. Does that make me a fake fan? Probably. Now I'm wondering if there are other exclusive editions out there. My plan is to go and get some boba and then just read the heck out of this and finish it by tonight. It's happening. It's gotta happen. Because I need to know what happens. <laughs> Okay, guys, I've reached page 177, which is chapter 10. How many pages this is? It's a little over 500 pages, so I've got my work cut out for me, but I know I can do it. I just need to, like, stay off social media, stop replying to texts, hide away from the world just to finish this book, but I'm gonna do it. Because the book before this book, The Conference of the Birds, is kind of a bit of a bridge book, this book kind of goes off with all the developments that were set up in the book before it. So basically, things are hitting the fan, and it's chaotic, and a lot of things are happening, and... <sighs> And it's kind of an explosion of madness, but I'm also here for it. It does feel weird though. Like it, it feels weird that this is the end. I, I, I don't think I've accepted it yet. But anyway, the rest of my day, I'm literally just blocking it out to finish this book. Ah! I stopped, turned back. He was looking right at me. It felt, in that moment, like we were a million miles apart and as close as we'd ever been. I finished. I read the book. The last book in the Peculiar series. That sounds so weird. The last book. Obviously, I know that there's like room for more stories and I feel like Ransom could at some point come back to this world and like write more in it, but for now, it's the end. The end of an era and I just, I'm shook. I'm kind of shook and I'm sad about it, but at the same time, this is a really satisfying ending. Now, I know that I'm gonna have to reread it to like solidify that because even with Library of Souls, like I had to reread it to like fully appreciate it, so like I'm gonna have to reread this big old book, but I'm down for that. I'm okay with that. My initial thoughts though coming out of it is that it almost feels like an elevated version of Library of Souls. Obviously, they are very different books. Different in terms of, like, the build-up and the fact that the stakes are, like, ten times higher. And the chaos itself is on, like, a completely different level, let me tell ya. Like, I pretty much felt like I was holding my breath throughout the reading process of this book, which is a long length to hold your breath. The biggest, I guess, like, takeaway from this book specifically, obviously no spoilers, I'm not going into detail. I think my biggest takeaway from this book specifically, though, like, right now, right after reading the book, is that I just really appreciate Jacob's evolution throughout the series as a whole. One being his personal growth, because throughout the series we just see him grow so much from book one all the way to this book. And what I love actually is that by the end of Library of Souls, he doesn't have it all together. Like in a map of days, we see him kind of going through it, specifically on a personal level and kind of questioning things, questioning everything, decisions that he's made. And by this book, we're seeing a lot of growth and security in who he is and the decisions that he's made. And then we see evolution in other aspects aspects of his character, which I can't really talk about. I wish I could talk about it, but spoilers! Also, I'm just gonna say this, but the last chapter almost had me weeping. I'm not really a book crier, like, I just don't normally cry while reading books, but, like, I'm getting more emotional the older I get. So the way this one ended, oh! It had me emotional, it had me up in my feels. Dang you, Ransom Riggs, dang you. But I guess to end off this vlog, because obviously I can't go too much into detail on my thoughts on this one because of spoilers, I just want to give a big thank you to Ransom for writing these books. Obviously he's not watching, at least I hope he's not watching. Please do not watch this video. I hope that you are not watching. But this series means so much to me. Specifically, Jacob's character means the world to me. I relate to him in the loss that he faced. I relate to him in terms of feeling direction 
emotionless at times, being unsure as to where life is gonna take him. I resonated with his loneliness and I feel like seeing him find his people gave me hope that one day I would find my people too. It's a series that helped me find my weirdness and I can't wait for more people to discover this series down the road. I'm gonna quit being sappy now, but that's it for this vlog. I hope that you guys enjoyed it. Thanks again to Penguin Teen for sponsoring this video. And if you guys wanna see me do more themed trilogy or series vlogs, let me know down below in the comments. Specifically, let me know which series or trilogy I should do. If you like this video, be sure to go and hit that like button. If you wanna see more bookish content from me, be sure to go and hit subscribe or go and hit that bell icon and you'll be notified every time I post new videos. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope your day is bright, that tomorrow is brighter. Keep reading what your heart desires and I will see you soon with a new video. Bye, yo!